Hello again and welcome. I thought I'd just give you a quick update as far as what I'm doing with the Gauss and Ultra. After I ran the meter at 12,000 volts, I took it back apart. And this was the original shield that I made for the meter. What I was trying to do was basically solder the can to the bottom side of the main shield. And that didn't work out so well. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone back to having the can separate. And I've just kind of bent this thing a little straighter. I made this area here a little bit larger for the Bluetooth area. And I've lengthened this area down in here. You can see this area down here where the slit is is still exposed and accessible. That's because the fuse holder here has this plastic ridge that will fit down through that groove. So I've cut up a new plastic spacer. Again, this will just keep things from shorting out. The original shield was made out of mu metal. This new one is made out of netic and they're both uh, ten thousandths of an inch thick. The netic is made to handle higher magnetic forces and that's certainly one of the main properties that we're interested in. So I just have my tape eraser out. I'm about a half an inch away right now. That's not the relay, that's the plate actually vibrating. Another thing I've done is I've RTV'd up the length of the socket. And the reason I did that is there was basically nothing holding this in place except right up at this ridge here. I would imagine that this is a high stress point because this is basically just can levered out here. So I'm hoping that this gives it a little bit more mechanical stability. I've also changed out the wires that they had. These are a Teflon wire. And then I've gone ahead and added new RTV up in this area here. And I've also RTV'd it over to the battery case. I almost forgot there's one other very important thing that I'm trying with this version. In the center you have the rotary switch. What I've done is I've taken a copper foil tape and I basically laid that copper foil all along the face of this meter. And I've soldered a small spring that goes between the front side shield and down to this new shield that I've added here. There were two problems I was having with the meter. One, it was still sensitive to static. The other is I could actually rub my finger up in this area here and I would get about a 400 millivolt shift in the meter. So what I'm hoping is that this foil will actually solve that problem. One of the things I didn't like about this meter is that this is all open to the environment. You can imagine all kinds of stuff falling down inside of this thing. So I found this small protective boot. This would be used for like the end of a bolt. This is the end of a multimeter test lead cap. It just fits down in there. These two just happen to made up just perfectly. And this is a nice snug fit down inside. And that should keep any crap from getting down inside of there. So we're going to do a couple of things with this. First thing we'll do is try it with the tape drive eraser. You can see I have that like right up against the meter. See, no effect. Same thing with off to the side. Let's try it off the back. Boy, that works really well. Alright, so from that standpoint, I don't think we're going to have any problems. Alright, let's just try our hand. So again, we'll just switch this over to our 300 millivolt range. That looks real good.
And the last thing we want to try is our cloth. When I had this last shield on, I was still getting about 500 millivolts or so of shift. Let's just zero this thing out. Holy smokes. Look at that. Alright, let's try. Try it with a felt side. Look at that. Yeah, like basically no effect. Check that out. Wow, that's the best I've ever seen it. Like I say, I used to be able to go like this. This would have a pretty dramatic effect on the displayed value as well. This is just way, way better. So it looks like our new shield works pretty good. I think I'll go ahead and I'll leave this just the way it is right now. So I did hear back again from Gossen. So apparently they watched the video where I was using the magnet to change the state of the relays and then the meter would not read the correct AC voltage. So they've acknowledged that now and they've said that they were going to start doing a risk assessment for that. So I don't know what's going to happen with all that. If they'll end up just keeping the meter the way it is or not, I have no idea. We'll just have to wait and see. They've also said that they're looking at every other problem that I brought up with the meters. You know, maybe they'll come up with a updated version for it. But I think that's all I'm going to be doing with this meter. But I got a letter the other day from Dave Jones at the EV blog. And he offered to send me a brand new 121 GW meter. It'll be nice to have the real one instead of our little model. So I'm looking forward to that. So stay tuned and maybe this will be the next meter that we look at. Later.